Assalamu alaikum. I'm your host, Tabish Khanzada, with you discussing Canadian taxes. Our guest is Mr. Malik Hamid Iqbal. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mr. Malik is very highly qualified and very experienced in his field. He's associated with M&N Chartered Accountants, Inc. And you can contact him directly at 647-299-3956 or you can email him at texas.can at gmail.com. Before we go ahead with our topic today, let's learn a little bit about his firm. Uh, m and Associates Chartered Accountants is a full service accounting firm. Mm -hmm. We have uh, designated accountants with us and IT professionals. As far as my uh, qualification is concerned, you have very kindly mentioned it and it is also being shown on the screen. Mm -hmm. The services which we provide, uh, our point of view uh, is that uh, when we discussed this with e -Avas, right, we decided that we provide information on taxes to our viewers mm -hmm. and clients. And uh, but one sh thing should be uh, kept in mind that these are guidelines. Whenever our viewers want to utilize these guidelines, they should seek professional help mm -hmm. because each situation is different. And to get maximum benefit, they have to have a proper professional guidance. Right. So this is uh, what is uh, very important. As far as our uh, services are concerned, we. We have a point of view that when we are doing individual taxes, the idea is that our clients should get maximum benefit or maximum tax refund. And uh, when we are looking at uh, uh, corporations or businesses, small mm -hmm. businesses or self-employed, we make sure that all the records are kept very clear and very uh, straightforward mm -hmm. so that if CRA comes back and they want to audit, mm -hmm. they should be able to have a proper information and correct information all the time. At the same time, the R record is also straightforward. Right. So there are no issues there. We are uh, providing uh, for small businesses and uh, self-employed people. Mm -hmm. We are providing tax, serv tax services, bookkeeping services, GST, HST returns, right. payroll, uh, and EHT, WSIV. Mm -hmm. We also are helping uh, our clients for new business setup. Mm -hmm. We make business plans, feasibility studies, get them registered with the CRA, payroll numbers and all those things. And we also guide them that what records are to be kept and maintained for and for how long. Right. So these are the things. And uh, we also help our clients in audit representation. Mm -hmm. If CRA comes and asks uh, for audit, mm -hmm. we help them to uh, generate that information properly so that CRA gets what is required and uh, at the right time. At the same time, our records of our clients are straightforward, straightened up. So Great. these are the things which we are providing. Great. And our viewers can contact Mr. Malik at 647-299-3956. Or you can also email him at texas.can at gmail.com for any of your tax needs. So let's go ahead uh, with our program. But if it's okay, can we take a question uh, before? Sure. Sure. So um, a gentleman is asking that he was going to meet a client and he was uh, driving on 401, he was getting late, so he started speeding. And because of that, he got a ticket. To reduce that ticket, he had to get legal help. And he's wondering if he can claim the ticket charges as well as the legal help charges that he received um, as business expense since he was going to meet a client. <laughs> Uh, these expenses, of course, there are some expenses which can be claimed mm -hmm. as business expenses, but not like these expenses. Okay. Any charges to defend civil or uh, criminal uh, mm -hmm. charges are not deductible. And especially uh, when we break any law, right. that is not a business. Mm -hmm. So he has to be careful and uh, these charges. Uh, whatever charges he has paid to the legal uh, and whatever fine was there, mm -hmm. uh, he has paid it. It cannot be deducted as a business expense. Okay. So <laughs> now we, since we started with legal expenses, right. we would go uh, sure. and explain legal expenses. Mm -hmm. Now there are legal expenses which can be claimed. Okay. For example, if uh, an employer has not paid 
his employee mm -hmm. and employee goes to the court mm -hmm. and uh, to establish his right for the wages and uh, or collects wages from the uh, employer yes those charges can be okay. claimed mm -hmm. uh, similarly for pension benefits or retiring allowances if uh, the taxpayer has to go to the court to establish those rights mm -hmm. that those are uh, deductible okay. and uh, if there is a tax uh, levied on somebody and he goes and fights for tax that whatever tax is assessed mm -hmm. on that that is also uh, deductible Great. similarly uh, we discussed uh, in our one of the pre previous uh, programs mm -hmm. regarding uh, relationships and uh, when there is a breakup in relationship mm -hmm. means the husband and wife or common law they break their relationship and they, no more they are right. spouse so then uh, the uh, legal expenses are incurred for getting the child uh, uh, support payments right those child support payments mm -hmm. they are for getting child support payments mm -hmm. those charges are deductible right there are certain charges which are also not deductible but uh, if they have to prepare things for the above the i have mentioned the things mm -hmm. uh, any work which has to be done to prepare mm -hmm. for those cases those charges are also, also deductible mm -hmm. but there are non deductible charges for example if there is a breakup in rela relationship mm -hmm. and uh, the taxpayer asking or seeking divorce or separation mm -hmm. and he incurs legal expenses those mm -hmm. expenses are not okay. deductible similarly custody of the child or visitation right. uh, rights uh, they are also not deductible. Mm -hmm. If somebody is goes to court to get the custody of the child mm -hmm. or uh, uh, for visitation char uh, rights, mm -hmm. these charges are not deductible. Similarly, civil or criminal court uh, charges, if somebody goes to a lawyer for fighting those charges, mm -hmm. they are also not deductible. Mm -hmm. Now, legal charges uh, for buying a capital property, they mm -hmm. are also not deductible, but uh, in our uh, investment uh, income uh, program, mm -hmm. we discussed that any legal charges for buying a uh, capital property that is added to the cost of the capital property. Right. So there it is taken care, mm -hmm. but not as a legal expenses uh, against the business that those are not deductible. Okay. like that okay we'll take a question before we go for a break sure. uh, mr paramjeet is asking that he paid six hundred dollars as legal fees to sue his employer the employer right. had some unpaid wages uh, which were worth about thirty five hundred and he's wondering if he can claim these deductions uh, uh, it is exactly in line that mm -hmm. uh, he is actually establishing that this was his right and he has to get that money mm -hmm. so he can claim those uh, okay. legal expenses. In some cases what happens that uh, judge also or court also get awards something. For example, he has incurred $600. Mm -hmm. In $600 he has uh, paid his legal fee and he got collected $3,500. Right. So, Sometimes court says that okay, legal expenses, 400 for example, mm -hmm. is to be paid by the employer. Okay. So he has paid 600 dollars. Right. He is getting 400 dollars from the employer, mm -hmm. so he can claim 200 dollars in tax return, not 600 okay. now. Okay. But if nothing is awarded, only mm -hmm. his wages are received, mm -hmm. then of course he can claim 600 dollars. Otherwise, whatever has been reimbursed by the other. Uh, person right that will not be great thank you Mr. Malik stay with us we'll be back after our break and we'll discuss health benefits we are back and we'll be discussing health benefits in regards to taxes with Mr. Malik health benefits are uh, 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 for example, uh, the main uh, health benefit or is disability right. charges mm -hmm. and uh, this partially compensates uh, for the expenses. 
Now, what happens that uh, when somebody is claiming disability charges, he has to file or fill a form T2201. Okay. That form has to be filled and uh, this form uh, is to be filled by a qualified person. Okay. So, uh, and uh, there are detailed conditions mm -hmm. on those. Income Tax is Act is very explicit in what constitutes disability and disability is uh, for example blindness mm -hmm. or uh, if somebody is uh, physically uh, impaired uh, for prolonged uh, due to mental or physical uh, thing, uh, reasons for prolonged uh, impairment and it could be for uh, a period of 12 months right right so if uh, it is for 12 months and he is not able to perform basic activities mm -hmm. or he, it is very extremely difficult for him to perform these uh, things mm -hmm. then those forms uh, that has to be mentioned in and doctor would sign it okay so that form has to be filled up and then they can and where can they get this t2201 Oh, T2201 is available on the uh, website, okay. uh, CRA website. Mm -hmm. They can download it mm -hmm. and then they can bring it to the doctor and doctor would look at that. That has to be submitted. Even if they do not qualify, they ha that has to be submitted so that doc uh, CRA would determine. It is not doctor which determines that, okay, he is oh, disabled. Right. CRA would determine based on all those things uh, that it is a disability or it is not a disability okay. and then they can get that credit and our viewers can contact you regarding if they need any help yes exactly exactly uh, viewers can always uh, uh, call us mm -hmm. and we can will advise them great so uh, mm -hmm. now there are uh, some restrictions as well okay on disability mm -hmm. if taxpayer is claiming ten thousand dollars or more mm -hmm. or it, uh, claiming um, nursing care mm -hmm. so he can claim either of this either he can claim disability amount okay. or attendance care attendant care over ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars or uh, nursing home care oh, so okay. he cannot claim all those two or three right. he can claim either one either disability amount mm -hmm. or attendance care mm -hmm. attendant care or nursing home uh, Right. Uh, charges. Mm -hmm. So these can be claimed. Okay. Okay. Now uh, coming to medical expenses, these are also health and benefit uh, right. things. So medical expenses can be claimed for self mm -hmm. or for spouse or mm -hmm. for dependents. Mm -hmm. Those charges can be claimed okay. and uh, they can claim any 12 months ending in the year uh, tax when the tax rate uh, tax uh, return the year of the tax return mm -hmm. ending in that year so any 12 months to get the maximum benefit of that they can claim it and these expenses are which are actually paid by the taxpayer okay. or his spouse mm -hmm. now what i mean is that uh, some companies or insurance companies as mm -hmm. well when uh, somebody is going for prescription drugs, mm -hmm. okay, these prescription drugs are covered. Okay. They are covered. So prescription drugs, when somebody buys prescription drugs, mm -hmm. insurance company pays them 80% or sometimes employer also pays certain right. amount or maybe sometimes full time. Mm -hmm. So any amount which is paid by the insurance company or the uh, employer mm -hmm. will not be cannot be claimed mm -hmm. only amount which is not been paid and it is paid by taxpayer only mm -hmm. that can be claimed so anything which is reimbursed mm -hmm. that cannot be claimed okay. and uh, these expenses even if it is outside of the country they can be claimed okay so these are the things which they can claim mm -hmm. and uh, now uh, what are those charges which are uh, medical expenses mm -hmm. these are prescription drugs laboratory tests, diagnostic tests, uh, procedures, services, etc. Health insurance premiums are also part of that. Mm -hmm. Transport ambulance charges, transportation right. charges, guide dogs, mm -hmm. they are also covered. Uh, alteration in the house due to um, uh, mobility, impaired mobility mm -hmm. to help those. So those charges are also covered. Nursing home care, 
Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a long list uh, which can be uh, looked at and uh, they can contact us if there are any expenses which are related to their health, mm -hmm. they can uh, contact us and we can advise the clients. Right. There are some non-qualifying expenses as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if somebody has spent money for cosmetic right. surgery or cosmetic purposes to beautify himself or herself, right. those charges are not covered. Okay. So anything which is related to the health mm -hmm. and which was required, right. yes, those expenses can be covered. Mm -hmm. But anything to beautify or to aesthetic uh, purposes, right. that is not. We have covered. a question. Um, uh, Lady is asking if maternity clothes purchased can be claimed as medical expenses. Uh, <laughs> medical uh, expenses, maternity clothes are not covered. Okay. So <laughs> these expenses are not covered. We yeah. have a question from our previous program as well. Okay. Uh, Miss Alia wants to know, she helped a poor needy person this year and she gave that person some clothes and uh, some money and she is wondering if she can claim that as charitable donation. Charity is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, people should do it and our government also supports it very well. But anything which can be claimed has to be a registered charity that uh, and uh, there should be a receipt issued by registered charity with the number and signature of authorized person. Uh, Ms. Raza has uh, given this money, it's a good thing, mm -hmm. but this cannot be claimed uh, in uh, tax return. So uh, this cannot be claimed. Okay. Uh, just one more question. Uh, one of the lawyers is asking if you will help him with the, the audit of his trust fund. Yes, uh, we have uh, lawyers as our clients mm -hmm. and uh, trust funds are frequently audited. So yes, we would help them. Okay. And uh, uh, we also maintain their books. Mm -hmm. So and uh, we maintain trust funds as well. So, so that uh, there are no hiccups and it is all cleared up. Thank you very much. I am sure you learned a lot today. If you have any questions, please feel free to call Mr. Malik at 647-299-3956 or you can email him at texas.can at gmail.com. You can also view all of our programs, the different topics we have covered regarding taxes at eAwaz Facebook page or at the YouTube channel of eAwaz. Please Join us again next Monday and we'll tackle another topic. Until then, take care of yourself. And again, I highly recommend contact Mr. Malik at 647-299-3956 for all of your tax needs. Thank you.